Okay, welcome everybody uh, joining us uh, in the Zoom video conference uh, and on YouTube. I think we're just uh, hitting a thousand viewers and numbers still rapidly going up, but we have a full program, so we want to get started now. Um, maybe uh, at the beginning, a note of apology. This is an experiment. We've never done anything like this before. We've organized many conferences, but never such a big purely online conference. And most likely not everything will work. So if you have trouble following, um, try to fix it or send an email to the contact email that's uh, on our uh, workshop webpage uh, or use the, the Google form uh, that we use to submit questions uh, to send us any feedback. If, if there's something we can address uh, during the workshop, uh, we will try our best to do so. Uh, so based uh, on the feedback we got, we have viewers from all over the world uh, and also from a relatively uh, broad background. So we would like to encourage the speakers, at least uh, all of those that are already online, to uh, try and make their talks accessible to a broad audience, because uh, uh, what we've learned is that this is a topic that's not just interesting to scientists, but it affects everybody on this planet. So I want to start with a little bit of introduction, but it's just going to be uh, five minutes uh, about Ellis, about machine learning and AI and why this is applicable, uh, to make it plausible, why this is applicable also to uh, things like coronavirus uh, research. And I want to start with this picture uh, about the first industrial revolution, which was triggered by the steam engine and by water power, as we all know. And then the second industrial revolution was driven by electrification. So in a way, both of them were about how to generate and convert forms of energy. Now, the current change that we are experiencing has been called the digital revolution, but it really already started in the, the mid 20th century under the name of cybernetics. And in this revolution, energy was replaced by information. Now, like energy, information can be processed by people, but to do it at a large scale, we need computers. And uh, like energy, information is probably a conserved quantity, so we, we cannot create it from thin air. Now, the first two industrial revolutions had major consequences. Uh, we all know that, and the ongoing one may be similar. And in fact, it's our information processing abilities, not our physical strength that make us human. And that are the basis of, of human dominance on this planet. Now, like the industrial revolutions, we, we seem to have two phases. The first one was driven by computers and programming languages. Uh, the second one now unlocks a new information source by harvesting information from unstructured real world data. And the enabling technology, uh, and this technology will be applied also in uh, Corona research, as you'll see in the next hours. Uh, the enabling technology for this is machine learning, uh, which by now is often simply referred to as artificial intelligence. Now the uh, ELIS uh, network, uh, which hosts this workshop started two years ago as a, as a grassroots movement driven by, by some of the leading European AI scientists. And, uh, and what people had in common was that uh, a certain concern that uh, Europe will fall behind unless we act now. And uh, we think we can still safeguard and develop European technological sovereignty in this field. And it's not just about money. It's about coming up with the right mechanisms to build excellence, which attracts and enables the best young talent. And it's about creating ecosystems where uh, basic research applications and economical development, such as startups, work in synergy and it's about how to make each ecosystem stronger by connecting them across Europe. Oops. Now to, to, to realize this vision, we implemented a set of measures. So the first one are the Ellis programs. These are modeled after uh, the Canadian CFAR programs. Uh, they bring together a group of 10 or 20 uh, of the top scientists in a field uh, and, and work together. They work together, they meet several times a year on workshops uh, to drive the development in one area. And I'll get back, back to that in a minute. Uh, second component is a PhD and postdoc program. So we are in the process of creating a truly uh, pan-European uh, PhD program and postdoc program where people get to work uh, together with uh, several advisors of their choice, uh, which we've learned is highly attractive to the top students. And uh, we're very happy that both of these uh, ELIS programs and the PhD and postdoc program will be supported uh, by the ELISE proposal, which was a proposal that uh, we submitted uh, together with uh, and uh, coordinated by our partner uh, in, uh, partners in Finland uh, to the European Union under the Horizon 2020 uh, program. Uh, so this will be funded with 12 millions and we'll use this to support these two uh, measures 
And the third one is uh, that we're in the process of uh, establishing a set of ELIS units. <coughs> so these are uh, uh, little ELIS research labs within existing uh, research institutions. And uh, we made a public call for these labs uh, last year and we got an overwhelming response. Uh, a huge number of uh, outstanding places wanted to start an ELIS unit, uh, bringing to the table their own funding. So we have several hundred million euros that are now being invested in ELIS units. And uh, we were planning to have a big celebration, a big event today on the 1st of April at the Royal Society of London. Uh, we had been planning this for months, uh, organizing all sorts of things. Now, uh, we all know that the world has changed since then. Obviously, we are not meeting in London today. And we're also not meeting to celebrate uh, our ELIS units. We hopefully can do this at some point in the future. Uh, but we are experiencing that uh, uh, the world has changed in our daily lives, but also in our work. And it affects uh, all of us, or I think it's certainly many of us within ELIS, uh, also in the choice of research directions. So if I just speak from my own lab, I've learned that uh, there's a huge uh, creative energy and a huge motivation among people to uh, contribute uh, towards uh, tackling and managing uh, this disease. And then, for instance, in my lab, people have started about uh, causality analysis of what are the, the drivers of, of different mortality uh, rates, uh, how different things affect each other. We've started thinking about uh, uh, how to use tracking data in a private way, etc. So there, there's a, a whole range of different applications and things are happening very fast now, uh, maybe not always with the same scrutiny that we are used to in science, um, uh, but there's a big uh, sense of urgency and we felt it's now maybe a good time to convene this workshop uh, because uh, a lot of people know that stuff is going on, but they don't know exactly what's going on. And uh, this workshop should should facilitate presentation of what's the current state of the art in different directions. Uh, where can we make a contribution? What kind of technologies are necessary uh, so that people in the audience can also see a match where they can bring their own expertise to the table. Now, coming back to this uh, program, so we, we launched this set of programs across uh, a variety of fields, some of them in, in basic research methods development and theory, but some of them in application areas, uh, such as one that's in, in the climate sciences. And uh, we also launched one in the field of health, uh, machine learning applications in health. And uh, with the recent development, uh, uh, this uh, put this program at the, at the center uh, of our activities, if you want. And a lot of people in that area of health uh, are actually actively working in that area, but also in other areas of least, but especially in this area are actively working to, to manage and contain this uh, disease. And with this, I would like to hand over to Oli Stegle, who is one of the directors of the Ellis Health Program, and who will tell us a bit more about this program and about today's workshop. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would really like to um, take up on where, where Bernard finished with, with Ellis Health and also would like to welcome you.